Hey, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to work with YAML. In Python, we're gonna read a YAML file, write a YAML file, write multiple documents, add keys, update keys, read and write, etc. Let's get into it. All right, this is my VS code. First thing you need to do, you want to work with YAML, you open a Python file, you're gonna need to install PyYAML and then import it like so. We're also gonna do some JSON stuff, spoiler alert. Yeah, and then types. Let's start with writing a Python dictionary as a YAML file, right? There's a nice correspondence between them. We're gonna do a dictionary from string to any, and so we have a number of keys and then a number of values. So just straight string to string uh, could be a YAML document, but YAML documents get more complex than that, right? They have nested elements. So for this person, this record is, is like somebody's HR information, name, John Doe, position, DevOps engineer, da 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 get to experience and we have nested elements, right? Experience is another dictionary. And in that dictionary, it says, John Doe, you know, he worked at GitHub as a software engineer. He worked at Google as a technical engineer and at LinkedIn as a data analyst. And now he's a DevOps engineer. A lot of great jobs here, John. Good job. Similar for languages, right? He has an even more nested structure, right? Where he has a key for markup languages that he knows. And in that is a list of HTML programming list, da, 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 da. Python, JavaScript, Golang, I'd hire him. But you can see how this will map to a YAML file, right? All we need to do is use this yaml.dump. This is pretty much all you need to know. So we do that and we do a, why, why retype this when I can just press up until I find it? I run Python right and here's my YAML doc, right? So you can see languages, markup, HTML, programming, etc. right? And then if we want to write that to a file, so that's how we do the conversion, just with dump. And we have to pass it sort keys equals false because we want to preserve the ordering of our keys here. And then to write this to a file, we're just gonna open data one for writing. And we're gonna write that converted format there. And there we go, so that is writing. That's writing a single document. Something that might come up if you're in the DevOps world like John is, is you're working with Kubernetes and a lot of times there are multiple documents. So John is setting up the persistence volumes for Kubernetes and he's got this one, which is for MongoDB, mount data, storage 3GI, oh, I guess it's three gigabytes. And then he's got a second persistent volume, right? Which he wants to have storage two gigabytes also the same path, not sure about that, but this is a nested JSON document or YAML document. There's two dictionaries, right? So we have to use a different type because it's now a list of our document type. And when we write it, we have to use this method dump all. You can jump into these and see what kind of options they take, by the way, allow Unicode, explicit end, etc. and play around with these. You can see sort keys is true by default. And that's why we're passing it as false. But if we use dump all and print it out, it will do exactly what you think it does, right? Here is my YAML doc. And then this is a separator. So it just uses that three dash YAML separator between multiple documents, which is what you would expect, right? And then I can write that to a file like so, data two. Here we go. We have our double persistent volumes for Kubernetes v1 API. Okay, so that is writing. Now let's do some reading, right? So if we had a config file in YAML for a Python program and you know it had some options like do x, do y, uh, this might be a way to handle that, right? So we're gonna read back in our data one file. We're gonna use the safe load, just, you know, we don't know what's in the file and if there could be an exploit. And so this safe load will take the YAML string, or it's actually taking a, a text IO wrapper and convert it back into a Python dictionary. We should be able to see the type here. Oh, the type says any, but that's what it is. And I can show you by doing this, All right? So now we're getting back our dictionary, which is similar to data one. Now we want to make some changes, right? We've read this in. And it's not just looking for values and acting on them. We actually want to make some changes to the file, add new keys, update keys, and then write that back. So since it's a dictionary, this is super easy, right? We know there is a key named H, right? In our data one, 
So we're just gonna change it to 99, update that key. And then we're gonna add a new key, other name. John Doe sometimes likes to go by Tom Adams. So we'll just add this new key, right? And then same as we did before, we're gonna use the safe dump. We're gonna sort keys equals false. And then we're gonna write it back. We could write it right back to data one if we wanna update, but just for purposes of instruction, pedagogy, you might call it, let's use a new file. So now we can see age equals three, other name is Tom Adams. And you can see because sort keys is false, when we add a new element to the dictionary, it's just adding it onto the end, just like you might expect in Python. So that's basically it, right? From here, we can go in a lot of directions. Say we have a whole bunch of Kubernetes files. We wanna update all the version numbers to V2 or, or something. Not a Kubernetes expert, so I don't know if that makes sense. You know, we could make a loop, find all our YAML files, go through it, you know, check for that V1 key and make changes and write it back or, or validate whatever the access mode was always read, write and not read. I don't know, but programmatically we can now deal with YAML files and write them back. We also might want to do the same thing with JSON. So that's even easier. If we take our data three, where we just made changes, but instead of using this safe dump, we're just gonna use json.dump, which has similar flags, except it has sort keys equals false, which I, I like better as the default. Yeah, so let's do that. Now we are writing a JSON document, which we get here. It's a little bit harder to read, but we can just format it and see it's the same result, right? Name, position, age is updated, etc. It's got the, you know, there's a bit more syntax to a JSON file, an absolute number of characters, but the simplicity of the format, I kind of love, right? Like YAML has all these different rules, like, oh, you can do this format or this format. JSON's so simple, right? You have like a key, you have like a value, you have a key, you have a nested value, you have a key, you have a list. It's so simple. Anyways, that's how you do JSON. So easy to convert YAML to JSON, just convert to the Python dictionary and then back. And you can do the same the other way. If you wanted to read in JSON, write it as YAML. Well, let me just show you what happens if we do sort by keys by setting sort keys equals true, which I believe is the default. So it could probably be emitted. Uh, then we get this, right? So it's the same values. It doesn't look as nice, right? Because his name's not at the top, his age is at the top. And even with NR elements, they're sorted, right? So GitHub comes before Google. Um, I believe, well, maybe it's not sorted because I think Python, Golang can first. So it's just sorting the top level, I think. Anyways, play around with that. If you dig into the definitions of these, you can see what kind of changes you can make, what kind of dumpers. There's a lot of options to play around with. This is how you read and write YAML in Python. If you want to learn more about, you know, writing little programs in Python, check out the rest of the channel. I have a, a great video about make files in Python. And yeah, let me know what else you'd like to see or if you've run into problems using this library before, subscribe to the channel. And if you wanna learn more about Earthly, check out the description notes. Earthly is a really great tool for Python programmers, especially if you're not just using Python, but you need to bring in other tools, maybe command line tools, maybe going to Go, maybe running something in Node, maybe doing some aux scripting. I have a great video on aux scripting too. Check that out. That will change your life. Earthly is a great tool to glue these together, open source build tool. Check it out and let me know what other videos you'd like to see next. Thank you.